Hey there, welcome to My Animal House. We're down here in the hide. Yep, here I am. I got another video for you. This one's about a scorpion. This is a common scorpion in like 13 states, couple countries that is rarely ever seen. That's in, you know, everything you look up, it says it right in there. It's just crazy how it is. And because of that, I guess there's not a lot of videos for it. There's not a lot of care videos. And then some of the advice that was in some of the little chats that I seen was just kind of ridiculous on some parts. Some parts were all right. Some parts you needed to know, but there really was no like care videos, like, you know, any kind of like little DIY enclosures for them or anything like that. So we're coming at you today with a video. I got some stuff over here. I just want to introduce you to my scorpion that I caught locally. I'm in in one of the states that it is in and um it, you know i'm in washington it goes all the way down into like new mexico arizona the, i will i think it's arizona i'm not sure there's like 13 states i'll i'll uh, talk about those later but there it's like it's like these scorpions are everywhere and hardly anybody even knows about it anybody that i've ever even told where i'm at it's like yeah i got this little scorpion or something They're like scorpions what i've had to take a couple buddies uh, actually up into the mountains flip some rocks for a while and actually find one and there are people in some of these chats that say they keep them have kept them in groups and you might be able to if you feed them enough I guess but just in my own experience in my area where I find them at anytime I've ever flipped over a rock from when I was a little kid hunting them up with my brother and stuff there's only ever been like one under each rock that's why I think they are so rare if they do live in groups and they're colonized underneath the ground in their little burrow and holes and stuff where they hibernate or stuff and they may even hibernate somewhat together but I think when they're out and they're active times and stuff, every I've never seen them in groups other than maybe a you know mom with a baby or something like that. But other than that, not in any real groups. So that's up to you on how you keep them that way. But in this video, we're just going to kind of go over the northern scorpion. And it's, uh, its scientific name is Praratonus boreus. Hopefully I didn't butcher that up too much, you know, because it, it, some of them scientific names are intimidating. And that's why it was hard to get into arachnids for me when I first got into them. Because of like all the T's, the tarantulas and that kind of thing and the and the scorpions and all that. They just they When they talk about all the scientific names, if you got to get into the wrong group to where they're only talking about the scientific names. It's like, what are they talking about? It's kind of overwhelming. But just get back to the basics. There are common names for any of these, you know, most of these scorpions and tarantulas. Stick with those and most people know what you're talking about and get into the hobby it is so fun so today i hopefully you enjoy this video i'll introduce you to my little guy show you some pictures a little bit of care and a diy enclosure that i'm going to put him in and we'll talk about a couple of the enclosures i've had him in all right we'll get to this video thanks for watching all right everybody this is my little scorpion when i first caught this little guy he was probably half the size he is right now he got a little scared, but um, you know, he's a cool little guy, and um, I had him in a tinier enclosure, I'll show you right here, or a bigger enclosure when I first got him, and then um, he didn't seem to do much, he he hit all the time like normal and that kind of thing, and um, and I wasn't sure if he was getting food, I thought maybe he was too small, and for the size of enclosure that I had, I'll show you now. I just kind of wanted to give you a couple little close ups of him just sitting there, and um. Uh, running around these will vary in color they'll get a little darker a little lighter a little more yellow a little light light brown kind of depending on where you find them there is like 13 states like i say that have them yeah as far as i from what i've read you can find these in arizona california colorado idaho montana nevada new mexico north dakota oregon south dakota utah washington where i'm at in Wyoming and you can find them in Canada like I said I think it's Canada's like only scorpion there but um and you can all uh, somewhere in British Columbia I think you can find them as well so they are pretty common um species as far as the, the the amount of states that they're in like I said they're just never seen because a lot of people don't even know that their their state even has these little critters and then you know, like I said, you really have to hunt for them, flipping over rocks and that kind of thing. And maybe at night or something with a UV light, you could uh, find them a little easier. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to how I'm going to house this little guy. And we'll talk a little bit more about the enclosures that I'm going to put him in and uh, that kind of thing. I just kind of wanted to get a little video of him. Let me turn his little cup. Yeah, he's a cool little guy. I mean, they're just a littler species. They don't get very big, about one and a half to two inches they get. Maybe a little bit bigger, depending on where you find them. But that's basically where they go. Their venom isn't very poisonous. I mean, it is to other little, you know, smaller animals and uh, stuff like that. But, you know.
their venom isn't very poisonous. It's, you know, less than a bee sting, unless you're allergic to it, of course, you know, and then it could react a whole lot differently. But either way, I kind of, you know, they, it, from the reports, you, do, you don't really hear a lot of people being stung by them. And they make little, great little, you know, beginner scorpion pets. They're not very venomous at all. And I just think they're awesome. So uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do and how I'm going to put him in his little enclosure. All right, everybody, here we are at the table. This is what I originally put him in. I had some substrate in there, but he, he did. He would hide underneath his little rock, and he would never come out, and that was okay. I wasn't worried about that because this is a burrowing, you know, um, scorpion, and they are nocturnal, and they like to hide. They don't really want to come out in the open, but w with him being so small, I got to thinking to myself because we talk about it a lot with other reptiles, especially like monitors and stuff. If you move them up in a bigger enclosure too fast, you know, it might freak them out. So, you know, when, when you find them underneath their rock, that's their little home rock. They don't go really farther than that. So when he's a small little guy, I thought, well, maybe I'll put him in a smaller enclosure. And, and I did. I put him in this little enclosure here. And these are the little temporary ones. I've talked about them before. And um, I just don't like the lids. I have him in one now. I'm going to actually put him up for a minute while we're making this video. And then um, I had him in here, and this was his little piece of cork bark. That was in there for him. But as soon as I put him in here, and I had a little water dish in there for him and that kind of thing. And uh, and that was one of the comments that I seen in, in the video. It just was ridiculous. So if you see this video, whoever made this comment, you know, leave the cup in there or the, the cap. There was one of the one of the comments in what I was reading said that, you know, that he owned some of these. And um, every now and then he would put a cap full of water in there and he would watch them drink. I'm thinking to myself, this is a nocturnal, bur you know, burrowing animal that does not want to be seen, very rarely seen, comes out and drinks out of a cap. Maybe you should leave that cap in the enclosure. They're thirsty. Leave it in there. Maybe they're not getting enough water from their food because they will get a lot of their, you know, moisture they need from their food. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting a little cap full of water in there. And if you are worried about it, when you put your little cap of water in there, put a couple little pebbles in there to where then, you know, if you're worried about them drowning or anything like that. But leave the water in there. Give them source to, you know, clean water to drink from. You know, you like clean water, so do they. But my point is, is when I put him in here, the little guy never hid. He was always on top of his cork bark. He, he would run around and check out the enclosure and stuff, and he didn't hide. So I thought to myself, maybe with his size and this enclosure, he knew he was the only one in here, and this was his enclosure. So I think he felt better. So, and I hate this enclosure. I hate the lids. I really do. You got to peel them off like that to feed him and stuff. And I just think it just disturbs him too much. So I'm getting rid of this. And I'm going to go to these right here, which is, I have a DIY enclosure video for um, arachnid spiders and that kind of thing. I, I, I have uh, uh, my tarantulas, my teas are in there and that kind of thing. And I just really think they're great. You put some ventilation holes in them and that kind of thing. A little bit of substrate, depending on if... Uh, what kind of, you know, the usually the scorpions are usually more, they're not a, really arboreal. But even if you have a tea that you need to, that's an arboreal tarantula that you need a taller enclosure for, these taller ones are really nice as it's going through its stages of enclosures. And they're cheap. You can get them at Walmart, five, six bucks. And I, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set this little guy up in, in one of these because it's still, it's half the size of this. It's a little bit bigger than this, but he's grown a little bit since I've gotten him. So he's, like I said, he's about twice the size. So I think he'll do really good in this enclosure. And I like the lid and I like these enclosures you'll see in the video that I posted up above. So, I mean, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get this guy set up with some enclosures. The only thing I want to talk about, too, is cork bark. Any kind of an uh, arachnid keeper or scorpion keeper, you know, cork bark, we use it in a lot of ways. But you can get little packages of this, like little cool little pieces, you know. They're like six bucks. Or you can get a whole round like this. I've even broke some off here and sawed it off and all that kind of stuff for like 10 bucks. So, it, it, I mean, if you're only going to have even one, you know, one or two scorpions or tarantulas, having some extra cork bark around is really good in case, you know, if you change their enclosure, you want it bigger or something like that. But buy them both. Buy these bigger pieces and just break you off a piece, you know, to use for your tiny enclosures. You'll save a ton of money because, like I said, these are like 10 bucks for the big pieces or like five or six bucks for just a little piece in a bag. So, you know, great tip right here. Make sure to get this in bulk and just break off your own pieces. All right, we'll set up this closure and we'll get on with this video. All right, let's take the top off here. The basic thing with these, these scorpions, the, the one thing you need to know is they don't need any UV light, especially like the ones here in Washington. Washington State does not even have any UV light in the natural sunlight around here anyway. And they're a nocturnal animal that, that just as soon be buried in a hole or under a rock. 
So there's no special lighting. And these guys are so durable. It's insane. Where, I, where I'm at, it'll get 10 below in the winter and 110 degrees in the summer. These guys are very durable scorpion. They can live in a lot of conditions. They will hibernate if they do get cold enough. So if, if you have them somewhere where they're colder, you want them to hibernate, they'll just climb underneath their little hide or in their hole and you'll know you won't see them for a few months until it warms up. Or you can just keep them in, you know, a warm environment. They don't know any different. They don't trigger it into, into hibernation nation unless you know the temperatures change and that kind of thing but in a controlled environment i think it's fine to just keep them year round to where you can enjoy them as a pet so uh, and putting the substrate you can do all kinds of stuff bark chunks uh, cocoa fiber you know soil eco earth any of that kind of thing i have seen people that are i've heard of people that'll um in other burrowing scorpions and stuff will put rocks inside the inside the substrate to where when they dig down they have some structure inside of there but these guys with the with the cork bark hides and everything they just dig their little tunnels i think the tunnels do fine i don't really think you need to put rocks in them or nothing so uh it's just make, makes it a mess if you're changing out the substrate and stuff later so i think they're just fine burrowing their own little holes and they'll adapt to the environment that like i said these guys are durable little fellas and they'll they'll move they'll i mean if where they're at is is no food and and the climate's wrong they'll they'll continue to move to where they can get to where they need to be to make them you know to where they're comfortable these guys are smart they're really durable so i just some substrate make it pretty thick to where they can burrow and dig them a hole give them a little hide and some water not a lot of care after that so there's not, you know, you don't need any special lighting or heating, it depending on if you're going to hibernate them. So they're a really simple beginner scorpion, in my opinion. And you can find them in the, the states that I talked about before. You know, you can go rock flipping. It's just a fun adventure with family, friends, whatever you want to do. And, and you can get some little critters out of it. And, and I think it's just, it, it's amazing. I love these little guys and I'll continue to keep them. And um, I think it's fun. So this is why I'm sharing with you. We'll get this little enclosure done and put the little guy in there. And this will be fun. Here we go. I mean, you can pack it down, but I wouldn't pack it down too, too tight. You know, give them a little head start. But they'll kind of pack it up as they go. These little guys are workers for sure. Let me get a little more. Let me throw more substrate in there. Then we got that set up right there, and then uh, well, I'll just throw a little piece of cork bark in there, and and uh, and a little water dish, and I'll show you that here. We don't have to go through the whole process. I'll just show you when I'm finished, and uh, just like I said, just make sure you got enough for them to burrow down and have their little fun and some hides. And there's not a lot to it. And like I said, when he does get bigger, I'll probably move him into something like this. But why he's the size he is, I think this container's perfect. All right, here we go. This is his little enclosure. Like I said, you use a little cap. You can throw some rocks in there. He's big enough to where he can get out of there. He's not going to drown. He'll be fine. So, uh, you know, or some people will say cotton balls and that kind of thing. I just think with the rocks in there, you don't have to worry about any funky bacteria growing in the water or nothing, depending on what's going on. So uh, we'll just use this. And, and uh, earlier, I don't know if you noticed, I have uh, these. These are amazing. These are, you know, you can make little catch cups out of this here. Let me back up to where I can show you a little more. You can make catch cups out of the old pop bottles or whatever. And I actually have a hole that's taped up on the backside in case I need to put something through there to kind of nudge the, the tarantula or the scorpion or something like that. You just kind of, I use a paintbrush and I just kind of scoop them into here and you can get them in there and then you can just transfer them really easy. This little guy in the first enclosure that I got, I used the, the little, the little, one of the cylinders that I got a tarantula in and in that little enclosure and I just kind of coached him in here before I put him in that other little container so you know even when you get your spiders you can wash these out and save these little containers they're useful in a lot of ways so uh, we'll get this little guy in the catch cup and we'll get him in here and I'll show you a little footage of him running around his little enclosure and uh, I'll say goodbye at the end of the video I hope this video helped you along your way in keeping this little critter Thank you.
everybody. There we go. Hopefully this video helped you along your way with these little critters. Hopefully, you know, if, if, if you found this video because you have one of these little critters or you're thinking about um, maybe keeping one, hopefully this video helped you. And again, while you're here, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, telling your friends. I do do live streams on Tuesday and on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with Iron Dog Reptiles. We have a show. It's called the Iron Animal Show. We feature breeders and other keepers and, and there's tons of people in the chat that are all involved in this hobby. So if you're interested in anything like that, check out my channel or Iron Dog Reptiles, either one. And um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully this video helps you along your way of keeping these critters. Um, if you have any comments or anything like that, please post them down below. Don't be shy about it. And until next time, take care and stay wild.